Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I want to share the books that I read during the month of October. So over the month of October there was a Victober going on, um, hosted by a bunch of lovely booktubers who will be linked in the description. I managed to read two books for that. So first I read Carmilla by J. Sheridan Le Fanu, which is a vampire novella. And it's often described as a lesbian vampire novella and I would say that the lesbian aspect of it is quite um, light. Uh, I felt like it was more of an undertone rather than being a main theme. Uh, the characters seem to be um, the, sort of the sexuality of the character seems accurate but the actual story doesn't really delve into a love story I would say. Um, so in that sense it wasn't exactly what I was expecting but I thought that the novella as a whole was very action-packed, um, very atmospheric, it's sort of ghost-like and haunting. It's basically Dracula in a short package and with less of the problematic female character characterization um, that I had a lot of issues with in with Bram Stoker's writing. Uh, so if you're in uh, interested in that kind of book um, with the whole uh, gothic literature and uh, Dracula or uh, Frankenstein, then I would definitely check this out. The other book that I read for Victober I enjoyed even more and that is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. This basically is, um, this is described as uh, the first English detective novel. I would say that, that it's more like a case mystery novel than a detective one, uh, but basically it follows um, a uh, young woman who uh, she falls in love with a man called Walter. Their relationship cannot be so he ends up moving away and she marries a man that she's sort of betrothed to um, from her parents uh, before her parents died. Uh, so she is supposed to marry uh, Sir Percival who is a baron. Uh, he is um, this uh, prestigious man but there is a rumor going around uh, about his past and in particular past crimes that he has committed supposedly. The story sort of starts right before their marriage and some rumors going around Sir Percival and then follows on to see how much of that was actually based on reality and truth um, and the investigations done by some of the characters in the book. That is sort of the basic idea that it follows the uh, the mystery around the Baron uh, Sir Percival and goes on to both look in the past um, and look at the future and sort of the evidence of all of the um, the crimes that come up uh, as they dig deeper. But the actual book has a lot more to it. Uh, there is a sort of a subplot that comes after this main story is already done uh, and that is probably one of the things that I think would put people off this book. But overall I thought that this was really fun to read. It's very entertaining because it's a, a case and a mystery um, and learning about all the things and there was a lot of unexpected twists for me. Uh, I knew very little of this book going into it. But I also really enjoyed the writing in this. Uh, partly the actual prose style of Wilkie Collins. I thought that he had a very effective and a beautiful way of telling the story. I also really enjoyed all of the parts that dealt with um, the discourse around the legal system, justice system, legal rights and lack of legal rights for women. Uh, all of the things that are sort of themes in the book I really enjoyed uh, reading about and around uh, so I really really enjoyed this book. It is probably one of my favorite uh, Victorian novels that I've read up to this date. A book I mentioned I was uh, currently reading when I did my autumn readathon TBR is A Willful Disregard by Lena Andersson. This is a Swedish novel and it came out a few years ago and won the August Prize which is basically the most prestigious literary prize in Sweden. It's about a character called Esther who um, she really admires a, an artist uh, called Hugo and um, 
the book follows their their relationship, um, them meeting, and then how their relationship develops over time. Um, but I say relationship, but mostly it is a one-sided thing. Esther really admires Hugo, and that admi admiration sort of mixes with uh, romantic feelings for him. Uh, he reciprocates only in the slightest ways, and a lot of the book is sort of her being unwilling to uh, to face the fact that she's treated like crap by him, uh, unable to move past him. The relationship between them is very frustrating to read, partly because the characters, uh, the speci especially the character of Hugo, is um, an ass, um, but also because part of the story sort of feels very relatable to being in that, uh, being stuck in a relationship that is probably not a good thing for you and um, not being able to sort of move on. However, there are some things in this book that I also didn't really like. Um, for example, there there are parts that feel overly stylistic, that seem to be stylistic without a good purpose for it. So I have actually written a full review of this, uh, which will be linked, um, that I go more into depth about some things that I liked and some things I didn't like so much. Another novel that I mentioned in the Autumn Readathon TBR uh, that I was currently reading then and finished in October was Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. I actually started reading the physical copy of this and ended up switching over to the audiobook of this, uh, narrated by Gemma something. I enjoyed what I read from the physical copy before uh, switching over to the audiobook, but I wasn't really connecting with it uh, very deeply. I didn't really feel um, pulled to go back to it. But when I switched over to the audiobook, I completely got stuck into the world of Nevermore. The audiobook is absolutely fantastic. The narration is so well done. Uh, she does the voices, but she also adds characteristics to each character that she um, impersonates through her voice. Uh, she adds sighs and whispers and uses her voice both in the volume and in the way she talks dialects and all of those kinds of things, pauses, um, to add another layer to the reading experience, which is what I hope and what I, I, uh, what I wish for uh, in a good audiobook. Nevermore is about Morgan Crow, who uh, is cursed with the eventide to um, only live until she turns 13 years old. Uh, she's swept uh, away by a man called Jupiter uh, to another world and in this world there is magic and she is sort of the chosen one. She has to go through some trials and tribulations uh, to get into the Wondrous Society, which is basically sort of the a secret club or a, um, a kind of Hogwarts-esque uh, society. So the book follows her going through these tests and trying to get into the Wondrous Society. Um, I really enjoyed the magical system, I enjoyed the details in it, uh, I especially like the characters. The one character I wasn't too keen on was actually Morgan Crow herself, and that was par probably part of the reason that it took me a while to really get stuck in the book. I wouldn't say that it necessarily lessened my enjoyment in the end, because I enjoyed all of the other characters a lot. It is just a ton of fun, and um, I am really, really looking forward to reading or listening to the uh, second book in the series Wondersmith, Wondersmith uh, that has just come out. Uh, hopefully the audiobook comes out before the end of the year so I can continue on. Um, but yeah, I would highly recommend it, especially if you are looking for a good middle grade book. Um, it's not without its flaws and it's not always very unique, but it is very fun and a, very, a lot of really likable characters and especially recommend the audiobook. Uh, the only non-fiction book I read during the month of October was The Fall of Language and the Age of English by Minae Mizumura. I've done a full video review of this so I won't go in too much detail about it, but it's basically a non-fiction book about uh, language, what language means to us, um, especially national identity and cultural identity, how language is shaped and uh, 
and transformed over time because of other things going on going on in the historical context. She talks about written language and the history of that and how that changes language as a whole. Um, she talks about uh, bilingualism as a thing that was very common in the past and how it is less of a thing uh, in uh, contemporary society. So the big idea throughout is that English is a global language that is taken over the world and more and more smaller languages are being sort of uh, suffocated under the, the global uh, nature of English. Uh, so more and more small languages are dying and English is um, is replacing them and she talks about what we lose when we lose all, all of the other languages, uh, so the, the things that are lost in this process. So this book is about her uh, sort of exploring those themes and those questions um, and asking you as a reader a lot of questions also. Uh, I really enjoyed the reading experience. I thought there was a lot to think about and for me it was especially interesting because I really enjoy learning languages. I have been trying to learn uh, French and Japanese for many years. Uh, um, and I've also taken Latin in um, in university. So language is something that I find very, very uh, important and uh, central to my life. So um, reading a book like this was really interesting and had, had me thinking about things in new ways. Last up, I also finished reading The Lonesome Bodybuilder by Yukiko Motoya. This was translated by Asa Yoneda. It comes out in the beginning of November. And it is a short story collection um, by um, the published by Soft School Press, uh, who kind uh, gave me a galley for this after I requested it because uh, I was really highly anticipating this book. Uh, the author wrote a short story called The Dogs that was published in Granta, the issue 127 Japan. And I read that a few years ago and loved the entire issue, but this was one of my favorites in that issue. Uh, and I've talked about it in previous videos when I did um, Japanese June. So I was, I was in love with that short story and I was uh, hoping that this author would eventually get something in English. And this is the first book of hers to be published in, in English. Uh, so I was really excited for that reason. Uh, the Dogs, the short story The Dogs is actually included in this uh, collection. Uh, so this short story collection is magical realism mixed with the weird. Um, some of them, sort of the first half of the book is stories that are more magical and, un and surprising and um, a little bit um, quirky or just charming and, and strange. The second half of the collection is more weird and um, dark and disturbing. Sort of the disturbing quality is sort of reminiscent of Camilla Gordova's The Doll's Alphabet. The collection as a whole has really high standard. Uh, there's really imaginative and interesting uh, stories and themes that it plays with. Um, one of the things I really like in Motoya's uh, writing is that she she sort of starts off with something that appears normal and then takes a sudden turn. So one of the, the, the weird stories is about a store where a woman is uh, in the changing room and she won't come out of the changing room so the uh, store attendant helps her with uh, tra trying out new clothes and and everything and uh, talks with her but she won't come out of the changing room uh, so she eventually takes the whole changing room out of the store and ends up leaving the changing room so that the uh, woman inside can go out when she's alone. One story that is uh, strange and kind of more on the disturbing side is women are walking their men with collars uh, and like leashes uh, and a lot of the stories are really interesting in sort of gender expectations which is something I really liked um, but yeah I would really highly recommend this collection if you are into magical realism if you want to read something slightly more fresh than Haruki Murakami's uh, ideas I feel like he has sort of rehashed his ideas so much that there's no surprises anymore with this collection there's always new things and unexpected things coming um if you're into that kind of thing uh then 
this is worth looking into and if you like sort of the Camilla Gordova weird side also this is absolutely a book you should read. So those are all of the books that I read in October. Uh, if you've read any of these as usual I would love to hear your thoughts about them uh, in the comments and uh, I hope you're having a really good day. I will talk to you soon. Bye!